to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen, and the subject of today's video, well, we're gonna take a look at these status boards. Very lean, uh, I would suggest, in nature. The idea of being able to walk up uh, and instantaneously see the status of something because of the use of visual management tools. Yeah, so, um, and often what's going on is the idea of, of colouring something in red or green to indicate its status. Now for me, there are times when this is a great thing to do and the status is instantaneous. And by the way, the response to it should be clear and unambiguous. It should be very easy to know what to do next. But there's times when this red-green status uh, visualization is completely the wrong approach. And, and here's where I want to start. Because the little example I've put on the board here is when you're doing this for your measures, for your, your key performance indicators, something where there is data attached to it. Now I've just written up some, some likely candidates that might be on this board here. Uh, OEE, OTIF, on timing four, or your schedule adherence measure. Uh, and we've just put it up as, I've, I've just indicated red or green. Of course, alongside these, I suppose, uh, there may be there may be some numbers written in there, so we may see the uh, the actual uh, we may see the actual figure uh, written in, and then we've got this we've got this red or green status. Now I have to fight constantly with people where they've collected, in some cases, large amounts of data really valuable data that would help them to understand their process and then they literally throw away all the value by just looking at a single data point. These measures, because they are measures, because they are, they are on a measurable scale, it's variable data, all of these should be on a graph. Yeah, so what you should be doing here, you know, let's take the OEE as an example. This whole thing should be on a graph because when you look at the single data point, the graph is telling you something. It's telling you what you need to do next. And this is valuable, valuable data and it literally is free information. You've collected all this data for months and months and months. Avoid this, avoid the single data point. You know, what does this mean? I mean, if you look at my example here, 65%, you know, if you just look at that, that figure, 
go well what, what, what does it mean well in this case look this is that's a very low result how do I know it's a very low result well because I can compare it to the rest of the graph I, I can't do that if I don't have the graph in front of me you know what would have happened if if this this was 65 percent suddenly I'd be looking at this and I go well that's a fantastic week what a great week because we had 65 percent but here look it's a terrible week now how am I making that judgment I can only make that judgment by looking at the rest of the data. So the, the idea of isolating single data points, you're wasting free, free information. You're wasting free ability to just make more money. Now the other thing about this is that you know often there's a there's a there's a specification that you're trying to hit. Let's just drop a spec on this for a second just to just to show that. Now of course, what's going to happen here is this thing's going to go red every time we we break this this limit that we've put in and it's some arbitrary limit, let's say it's 70% uh, OEE that we want to we want to beat. And of course if we drop below that then the status is going to go red. But if the status goes red, there's an important question you've got to ask. And again, it needs the graph. When the status goes red, you have to ask the question, am I in chaos or control? Chaos will take three months to fix. It needs a team and a project. Control, on the other hand, could take three minutes to fix. It's very quick. Usually, one person can sort that out. Now, that graph, for instance, is showing me that the process is in chaos. This is going to take three months to fix, and I need a team. How can I make that judgment? I'm looking at the graph. What does control look like, on the other hand? Well, control would look, look like this. Everything was going great, and then suddenly the process did that. So here's the limit. This is a single event. Yeah, this will be very quick to isolate, find out what was wrong, and put the, put the problem right, and, and remove it. So this, if the graph looks like this, it's gonna take you three minutes. Maybe three days, depends what the depends what the problem is, but it's going to be very quick and usually one person can do this. When you're dealing with a noisy process where there's huge amounts of variability, when you've got that chaos, you need a team and you need a project. Now I need to make that decision, but I can't make that decision from this board. That, that You're wasting, wasting huge amounts of influential data. Okay, so what would you put on a board and go red and green? Instantaneous status. Well, here's the kinds of things I would put on a board. I would put things like, okay, what's the maintenance status of the machine? So this would be specifically on a particular machine. So I'd walk up to a machine, I would have a status board and it would be saying, what's the status? Let me get a pen here. What's the status? And if it's saying, well, okay, the status of the maintenance is red, well, there's, a, there's an obvious reaction. Stop the machine and do whatever maintenance routine you're supposed to do. So there's no, there's no problem solving routine. There's, no, uh, there's nothing extra to be done here. It's literally saying, you have a status which is red and it needs to go green. That there is no intermediate value. There's no, there's no different values like there is up here. It's either right or it's wrong. What else might you have on here? So you might have, has the maintenance been done? Uh, let's have a think. Have the TPM, have the TPM checks been done? Uh, do you have, do you have all your skilled do you have all your skilled or trained labour in today? Yes or no? 
But the answer's oh, the answer's no there. And again, they're just they're just yes or no statuses. You, you're either you're either where you should be, as in all your skilled people are in, and therefore everything's right with the world. All your maintenance is being done, therefore everything's right with the world. Um, what else might you have here? Um, you might have our standard settings being used. Yeah. So again. What's the status? Yes or no? And if you think about this, it, it, this really is, is predicting forward. It, this, this is looking backwards. You see, what this is saying is, let's say you do this status in the first hour, then you walk up to the machine. Well, if you've got some, some red flags on the status board, we, we didn't do all the maintenance routines on the weekend, we have some skilled people that are missing today, or we're having to use non-standard settings. That's, that's a red flag. That's saying these numbers are probably not gonna look great tomorrow. This is a forward-looking thing because it's basically saying if you allow this to, to continue, your performance is gonna be shocking. Put it right. And there's no, there's no problem solving or analysis to be done necessarily. You're either status green or status red. Status red is not allowed. Status green is where we need to head to. Put it right and put it right now. And, and it's telling us forward performance will be terrible if we don't do this. So this is forward looking. This is backward looking. Not only that, this is a waste of great data. You know, we should be looking at graphs where it's a measure and we can look at the graph, then do it. Where it's a status and we say, is the status as we intended to be, yes or no, that's when you use the visual management. And that allows senior management to walk the floor and to instantaneously see where there is risk for today's production, to put the risk right and to guarantee today's production, to guarantee these figures are gonna be good. And that's where you should use red or green, when the status is just very digital. When it's a measure, then you don't want to say we've, we've broken the target, we haven't broken the target. That's not really a, a status board, it's not really a red or green board. Um, these techniques, as I say, they're, they're very prominent in Lean. They are great techniques because they can guarantee performance. But if you start to do it in the wrong place, you're beginning to ruin great data and you're beginning to ruin great information and it'll drive you to take silly decisions as well because of course if you look at this what happens tomorrow well it goes green it drop red and then it quickly goes green and then it stays green and then eventually it goes red again but it quickly goes green again it doesn't encourage you to actually fix the problem properly because you're not looking at the pattern use these status boards correctly they are brilliant guarantee your output use your data correctly they are brilliant take long-term process improvements. If you use the two correctly, you'll make pots and pots of money.